Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be talking about some very cold air that's going to be moving through parts of the eastern United States into later October, uh, or actually into later September, early October. Uh, we're going to have a very, very warm pattern into mid to late uh, September, and then we're going to go back into a cold pattern for parts of the eastern United States. Now, this, these temperatures could be down into the 30s, the 20s, uh, and maybe even a couple teens as you get much farther to the north. So we're going to be talking about all of that. We're going to look at the European Ensemble model as well as the GFS Ensemble model in today's video. And both of them have fairly high certainty that this will occur. So let's start off here. And before we do get into it, I do want to uh, ask you guys, if you do want to, you can uh, ask me a question down in the comments and I will answer it. I'll do a little Q&A at the end of my 1000 subscribers thank you video so if you have any questions weather related or non weather related ask me down below and I'll definitely pick some of those questions to go into the video and also if you want to shout out I'll shout out your channel at the end of that video as well uh, so definitely I am uh, already starting to edit out that video so I'm editing that video uh, right now I was doing that a little bit before I made this video and I think I'll do a little bit more after I make this video so I am working hard to try and get that video out uh, on time when whenever I do hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you do have any Q&A questions or if you want to shout out, let me know down below. And all the instructions are on the left-hand side of your screen there. So let's start off here with your current National Weather Service page. We have air quality alerts uh, over parts of, uh, of uh, Colorado and also for uh, Wyoming there and then also for Idaho and uh, Oregon there. We're looking at some air quality alerts. We also have some red flag warnings for parts of Wyoming. And then you see all those hurricane warnings uh, storm surge warnings, tropical storm warnings, and flood watches in effect for parts of uh, Louisiana and Texas because of what is tropical storm, uh, or actually I believe it's hurricane beta by this point. Now, we also see some tropical storm warnings offshore of the northeast coast. That's because of Hurricane Teddy, uh, which is going to be moving throughout those regions. So some rough surf all along uh, the eastern seaboard uh, over the next few days. So if you are going to the beach, definitely be aware of that. So uh, make sure that uh, you guys are being careful if you are going to the shore, uh, especially over the next few days because of Hurricane Teddy. Now, let's start looking at the European Ensemble model. We're going to uh, take this a couple days at a time, and we're going to look at uh, the European model and then compare that to the GFS Ensemble model for that same period. Now, the European Ensemble model is uh, a combination of about 30 to 40 members, and the GEFS model, the GFS Ensemble model, if I'm not mistaken, is a, a combination of about 21 models or so. So these are an averaged out uh, bunch of models. So even though in the later term it's going to not look as impactful, you're only going to see temperatures four to five degrees Celsius below normal, it will be a lot more than that. That really is just an indicator of how confident the models are. So for example, if one model has negative 20 uh, or 20 degrees below normal, and one model has maybe three degrees above normal, it's going to average out to only, uh, let's say, nine or 10 degrees below normal, even though in some scenarios, these models are picking out maybe closer to 15 or 20 degrees below normal. So as you get later on, uh, the confidence will lower and you'll see that uh, the map starts to get a little bit more averaged out. Also, I want to mention that we are looking at a North America view of this just to show you where the cold air is originating from, where the warm air is originating from, and give you a better uh, look of what's going on. So, here would be by tomorrow morning on the European Ensemble model, and here's the G the GEFS model, the GFS Ensemble model for the same time period, and we're looking at practically the same thing. Now, something that I want you guys to pay attention to, we do have some cold air over Greenland over this period, and also over parts of Alaska and Western Canada for this time, and that is going to be crucial to how this pattern starts to play out. But look at all this warm air that's starting to build further to the west and further to the north, uh, and that's going to be over taking the pattern as we get into the later part of September. Now, here would be by uh, Wednesday, the 23rd of September on the European model, and here is what it looks like on the G, uh, the GFS Ensemble model, and we're looking at practically the same thing. Still, the eastern United States slightly cooler than normal, but it is starting to uh, break down a little bit, and that warm is starting to kind of infiltrate a little bit further to the east. Now, here would be by Thursday, the 24th on the European model, and we're looking at still some cold air lingering there, but it is, again, much warmer than uh, what we were seeing before, and then here 
would be for the GEFS model, and we're looking at practically the same thing. So this is within the four-day time period, so they are going to be fairly accurate through here. But once you get past five days, this is where we start to get a little bit of uncertainty. Now this would be by Saturday, the 26th of uh, the 26th of September, and we're looking at on the European model, pretty much the entire United States under some warmer than normal temperatures uh, for the 26th of September. So that's something that we want to pay attention to uh, that the European model is going fairly warm for the 26th of September that indicates that it has a lot of uh, uh, that has a lot of agreement with all, within all those models here is the GEFS models and practically the same outlook uh, except a little bit more intense on the GFS ensemble models now here would be by Sunday the 27th on the euro and then here is uh, by Sunday the 27th on the GFS uh, ensemble models and practically again the same thing the GEFS I believe uh, if you go out in, in the longer term is going to be a little bit faster than the European model so you'll start to notice that a little bit now we're looking at still warmer than normal temperatures for much of the United States as we get into the 28th of September here's the euro and here is the GFS model now here would be by the uh, the 29th of September uh, Tuesday the 29th of September from the European model and look at this we're starting to see some cold air that dips right from Greenland and kind of moves straight southward into parts of the central uh, United States and also four parts of central Canada there where you're looking at some cooler uh, conditions on either coast though you are still seeing some warmer uh, than normal conditions over those areas but that is going to start especially for the eastern United States to cool down quite a bit so we have a polar connection already from this we are we have uh, cold temperatures that are going straight from Greenland down into the United States and that will eventually uh, head a little bit further uh, to the east over the next few days uh, so here would be by uh, on the GFS mo uh, the GFS ensemble model. It is a little bit uh, less intense, and you are seeing that cold air kind of being trapped over the southeast. Uh, but that is really the biggest difference here. Now here would be the European model on Wednesday, the 30th of September, and it is much colder for this day, and it's also looking much more uh, much more prevalent over much of the eastern and central United States. Here would be the GFS model for the same time period, and we're looking at just the southeastern quadrant or fourth of the United States looking at some cooler temperatures and then here would be by October 1st and we're looking at the much of the areas east of the Rockies I would say looking at some cooler than normal temperatures and look at this near six degrees below normal over parts of the south central and southeast that indicates that the model has strong agreement within it and that indicates that this is a very very likely outcome from this model now here would be the GFS uh, ensembles and we're looking at the same areas for the most part seeing those cooler than normal temperatures this would be uh, again by Thursday the 1st of October here would be by October 2nd and we're seeing much of the eastern United States still in those cooler than normal temperatures. This would be the Euro, and then here is the GFS, and the GFS is a little bit further to the east on this uh, frame. Now let's go one more forward, and this would be the European Ensemble model for the 3rd of October, Saturday, and we're looking at, again, much of the eastern United States still, uh, still warmer, uh, or still colder than normal, and still fairly colder than normal. Now, even though it's only 2 to 3 degrees Celsius, below normal at this period uh, or at this time uh, in the model we're, we're most likely going to look at temperatures that are going to be closer to 5 to 10 maybe 10 to 15 degrees below what is typical that's just indicating that there is some disagreement within the model so some models have this maybe only at 1 degree below normal while other models have it near 10 to 15 degrees below normal so there is some fluctuation within the model and that's what's bringing the mean or the average of all these models a little bit lower but still you will most likely see even more or even colder temperatures than this now here would be by uh the third of october on the gefs model and we're looking at just the eastern seaboard looking at those cooler than normal temperatures and then here would be by october 4th on the european model and we're looking at pretty much again the eastern united states still under very very cold uh temperatures and then if we uh move forward a little bit here uh we're looking at the gfs ensemble model looking at some again cooler than normal temperatures 
pictures for Sunday, the 4th of October. And then I believe this is the last frame here. This would be for uh, the European model on the 5th of October. And still we're looking at some cooler than normal temperatures. And then here would be for the GFS ensemble model, still some cooler than normal temperatures for the eastern United States. I hope you guys did enjoy uh, that style of video just because I compared the two models uh, and I kind of put them side by side. So if you guys have any recommendations on how to do uh, these temperature change videos, leave uh, leave them down below. I'm still trying to fine tune uh, this time this type of video, but it is interesting to see how good in agreement all these models are uh, that far out in the long range. This is close to 16 days out uh, or around 15 days out. So even though it is 15 or 16 days out we are looking at some fairly good agreement within the models uh and even though we're looking at two ensemble models so uh they are a little bit more averaged out and a little bit more accurate still you don't see this much agreement within two different ensemble models uh in that far out so we'll definitely have to keep our eye on this and i think this could be a very prevalent cold air intrusion so uh, i'll be keeping you guys updated on that also keep your eyes on the tropics over the next few days because we could definitely see quite a bit of storms still form even though we're already into september and october uh so let's uh so let's wrap up the video right here i'll see you guys in the next video make sure you are subscribing turning on notifications and uh make sure that you are liking the video goodbye